Rain, torrential downpour, nah, this is calf. We play through all kinds of weather up until the flooding starts, that is. Uh, this is CAF TV. Hey folks, I'm Alex Bastiavansky. Yes, the weather had a bit of a say in things last weekend, as if the stifling heat wasn't enough. Mother Nature decided to throw in a monsoon, as well as a tornado warning our way. And we've still got some great highlights, though. Also, we've got a special guest in studio today, very special. Former Premier League standout, Stoke City's Andy Wilkinson, will join me with ADP director Josh Bill, to talk about a fantastic camp they've got going on right now. That's coming up later on, but first, let's get to the game highlights and to the under-16 group we go. Future and ADP were two squads looking to move on up the standings. Heck, Future hadn't won a game since their season opener back on June 12th, which definitely seems unfair considering the talent they have on that roster. Well, on Saturday, they rediscovered their offensive touch against ADP. Game highlights now brought to you by Leica Sports. Leica, your passion, our commitment. ADP just six goals scored in seven games so far this year and they continued to struggle last weekend. Future, no such trouble. Lex Hancox comes up with the big save here but ADP can't clear it. Robert Kruger out front, goal. And Future up one zip after 11 minutes. Second half, all Future, 47th minute now. Leonardo Rocarola. Uh, nice moves, Isaiah Bodemid hits it. Nice stop though by Hancocks right there to get down. 57th minute, uh, more from Bodemid. He had a great game. He tattoos this shot and unfortunately smacks right off the crossbar though. 64th minute now, Future hits again off the corner kick. Kalen Robinson wide open for the free header and Future go up 2-0 and then the final dagger in the 70th minute of play here as Isaiah Bodemid uh, watch the sweet little move he puts on the defender right here. Whoops! And then he slams it home past the keeper. 3-zip and that was all she wrote. So 3 nothing your final future. Now 2-1-2 two, and two on the season. Afterwards, Isaiah Bodemid stopped by and he was impressed with how his squad stepped up against an ADP team that had a physical advantage. I think uh, we did very well today considering our physical um, part of the game. They are much bigger and stronger and faster than us and we kept the ball a lot made some good plays, and I think we did really well. We, were, we deserved the win. And then there was one. Epic FC has been the class of the under-16 group this season, along with Mississauga United. Those were the sole remaining undefeated teams heading into last weekend, but all good things must come to an end as Chantilly ended Epic's six-game winning streak on Saturday. Epic was trying out some new players for this game and Chantilly showed them no mercy. 16 minutes in, Mohamed Shamki on the break. But watch the saves by Cuba Grant here, especially the second one. He says, get out of here. Just swats it away, love it. Ensuing corner kick though, nobody marks Liam Outlaw out front. The header is a beauty. Chantilly up one zip after 17 minutes of play. Epic free kick soon afterwards. This is just unlucky. Second shot rings off the iron and uh, no goal. Uh, then good chance off the rush here, but Carson Provenzano comes up with the nice save. And then just a minute later, uh, he one-ups himself, skying to make an even better save right there. Solid goalkeeping. Second half, Chantilly puts this baby to bed though. Abud Imani gets chopped down in the box from behind. Penalty kick, Israel Perrin steps to the spot and puts it home. Uh, the game got called due to lightning with about 10 minutes left, meaning that Chantilly Hands Epic its first loss of the year, and with the win, Chantilly moves up to third in the under-16 group. Okay, still with the under-16s. Pace, great story this year. Lost its first three, hasn't lost since. A good chance early on here. Nahil Yates just over top of the crossbar, though. Alessandro Procaccini had a huge game for DFC. He sprawls to save Daniel Fuzzoni right there. Nice moves by Fuzzoni. Uh, 39th minute, Yates breaks the ice. Nice little shot, tucks it into the top corner there, and uh, pace go up, one zip. Second half, they keep coming. Alexander Cantasano with a shot from well out. Pretty much the only mistake Procaccini made all day, letting it in on the short side there. Pace up 2-0. Dragon Force managed to get one back in the 17th. Nice little one-timer by Samuel De Silva right there, and DFC right back in it, trailing by one. But then Pace gets the lead back up to two max. Ferrari continues his hot play as of late uh, with the nice little goal there. And Pace lead 3-1 after 61 
But then it's Procaccini with the stop of the week, point blank, one on one with Steven Montero. That is a beautiful stop. But on this day, he could only do so much as pace takes at 3 1 and are now unbeaten in six. Ryan Mascarena stopped by afterwards to share his thoughts on his team's play. Yeah, I think we uh, moved the ball well. We played well defensively. Uh, we worked in practice on uh, being a more defensive unit and shifting uh, to two-thirds of the field. And I think we utilized our uh, passing abilities very well and our pace down the wings and our big striker up top. Welcome back to CAF TV. Alex Bastrovansky here in the studio and joined by two very special guests now. Well, one very special guest and Josh. <laughs> so uh, guys, welcome to the show. Josh, Bill, mm -hmm. I'm just teasing, of course, the uh, Academy Director for ADP and uh, Andy Wilkinson. And if you're a football fan, you know who Andy is. He's a Stoke City man through and through, played for years. I'm not going to talk about his entire background because we're going to do that in a second here, but welcome to Canada. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, and you're in town to do a camp. And you've been doing a camp for the last couple of weeks now. We've got a couple more weeks to go. We'll get to the camp in just a second. Let's start with this. Obviously, you're both English. What's the background here? You used to play for Stoke City as well for some of the teams. Is this how you guys know each other? How do you guys have the connection? Um, yeah, so as a, young, as a young guy, I was playing for, for Stoke through the academy system. Uh, Nowhere near to the level that obviously <laughs> Andy's there. Uh, but the way we met, I was working at the club as a coach, as a, an academy and community coach. Uh, and Andy being one of the pros there, he's one of the guys that you would always look up to. And, you know, he's one of the, the pros who would actually give you, you know, and talk to you off the field. So, you know, we got talking that way and we got, you know, got to know each other that way. And that's how we... And he approached you a couple of months ago and said, do you want to come out to Canada and do a couple of camps with us here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was here... Um, as you know, I've, I've retired with concussion. I've been over in Canada seeing specialists over here and over in Guelph. Uh, and in January, I come come over. Josh invited me to see what he was doing, and I was really impressed. And the way he's got the the kids at heart is uh, is the way I would like to see it done as well. So, which is why I, I come back and said I would give him some of my uh, my knowledge and experience I've had over the last however many years in the Premier League and. Uh, give it back to the kids. So how are the camps going so far? Then there's two camps. Uh, there's a defensive camp that actually is just finishing up right now. Um, and then a general camp, I think we could call it right, that goes yeah. from the 18th to the 26th. Uh, so let's talk about the defensive master class. And uh, well, let's talk about you first. You're there giving your expertise. Uh, how did you feel about the camp and how did things go? Brilliant, yeah, the, the kids, great attitude and they listen well over here. The, uh, fully focused and, and listen to everything that I've been telling them. Um, yeah, the, their, uh, their ability is, is good. Um, there's things that they could work on and hopefully they've, uh, they've learned a lot this week from uh, the pointers that I've given them. All right, what has the reaction of the kids been to having Andy Wilkinson here? Oh, it's huge. I mean, uh, just for, just for a, a player from Canada to have the opportunity to be coached by uh, a uh, Premier League player, but a, a current, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, a fresh Premier League player who's just come straight out of the game. It's uh, knowledge that can't be bought anywhere, you know, and it's great to, great for Andy to give up his time and come over to deliver and, and pass that on. Absolutely. So you mentioned some of the things that can be worked on. Um, we're always working with this in Canada to figure out ways to raise our game. We'd be lagged behind other countries, no question about it, especially for a country with 35 million people. <laughs> and uh, you look at a country like Iceland that has 310 and you wonder what the heck's going on here, right? So there are definitely some things we can improve on. Technical ability has always been a big thing. You hear coaches say who come from other countries and see the Canadian system. That's something that Josh has obviously worked very hard on with his program to train his kids about. So from what you've seen from the camp so far, maybe compared to England and other English kids, same age as the Canadian kids, what, what are the, some of the major differences that you see? Uh, the, for this week with the defensive, uh, the defensive works, something I'm passionate about and something I'd love, I just love defending. It was naturally something I, I really like doing. Um, so just getting the kids positioning right, um, know where they are on the field. Communication was a big thing as well. They don't seem to talk to each other as much, but as the, the Are they being gone, too polite? It's a Canadian thing. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. I think maybe it's a bit of uh, 
embarrassed to talk to, shyness, to shout yeah. a, a shyness but we've brought that out of them and in the space of a week they've uh, they're all shouting each other giving each other information which is is really good to see right um what sort of things have the kids been doing is, is is it strictly on field or is there off field stuff going on example what are kids getting in, uh, if they take part in the camp so for the defending one, um, every session has been based on uh, obviously defending and, and how to communicate as a defender, how to actually, you know, physically challenge as a defender. Uh, so there's all aspects of defending in there. But also the the best thing for me that I thought was actually, you know, having Andy there and having the kids being able to talk to Andy. Uh, on the w one lunchtime we did a Q and A with Andy, and um, it was good just just giving you know everybody says they want to be a professional footballer, but the actual in depth of what to be a professional footballer is, is you know, they have no idea about it. Right. So just to ask general questions on that, and then the Q and A on how to be a pro and how to, you know, how to treat your body, how to work your body, and how to get um, the best out of everything that you're given. Right. Um, I think that's been a massive one for us, and, it, and it's good that Andy's obviously done that. Is 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 the shyness part the uh, the, the the not wanting to be as vocal? Is that something you noticed when you came over as well when it came to the kids? I think it all comes down to lack of knowledge. Right. Um, you know, obviously with the shyness, the, the lack of, the of knowledge, they mm -hmm. don't want to scream something out if they're not sure about right. it. Obviously, learning the the terminology. Uh, well, the English terminology, which can be, <laughs> di can okay. be different. I was going to say, apparently, so Josh has been teaching Andy some Canadian words, which we're going to find out in just a second, <laughs> actually. Uh, we've got to take a quick break. More with Josh and Andy Wilkinson when we come back. More CAF TV. Welcome back to CAF TV, Alex Bastubansky here in the studio and I am joined by Josh Bill, Academy Director for ADP and his special guest, uh, Andy Wilkinson, former Premier League player with Stoke City who is here to do camps with ADP uh, basically for the entire month of August and uh, hold up the jersey there Josh and let's show. So this is a signed Stoke City jersey that Andy Wilkinson signed and uh, there's a bit of a contest going on with ADP actually, and it involves Twitter, which I'm completely befuddled about. So Josh is going to explain exactly what's going on with this part of the contest, just talk about it. Yeah, so basically tonight uh, a tweet uh, will be sent out on ADP Soccer, um, and then all you got to do is retweet it and follow ADP, and then we'll randomly pick a winner who will um, post the shirt so they'll get to have it. Fantastic. If people want to sign up for the camp, Yes. Um, there's a there's a camp all next week. Um, so if if they want to sign up for it, they can go to adpsoccer.ca. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> As I correct my notes here <laughs> on screen, it's going to say the proper one. Sorry about that. <laughs> adpsoccer.com and uh, and find out all about the camps and everything yeah. like that. And yeah. we're showing the flyers and stuff as we're yeah, talking perfect. anyway. So. Um, Let's talk about the background then. Um, it's obvious not every day we get a Premier League player in here. Actually, it's the first time ever, so it's it's pretty <laughs> darn cool. Um, Stoke City man, for we were trying to figure out how many years, rough 14, 15 years, something youth system and the main team. I'm just going to shut up and let you actually talk about it and uh, your experience with Stoke City. Okay, yeah, I was lucky enough to uh, to play for the team I supported as, as a kid as well. So I left school at 15. It was a late August birthday, so left school at 15. Went straight into the academy. Um, within a year and a bit, I'd made my first team debut. Um, the manager there was keen on the youngsters getting experience. I went on loan to a, a number of clubs uh, and then broke my way into the first team. We got promoted to the Premier League and then cemented my place for uh, a good few, five, six, seven, eight years playing it, uh, in the best league in the world. Mm -hmm. and the unfortunate part is, but you had a great career, was just this past, was it February? Um, you retired um, due to, uh, it was a, a close range shot that hit you in the temple and, and we're going to talk about this as well because uh, Andy's a big proponent of um, concussion research and, and charity. So that unfortunately it ended the career, but what a career it was and I was also going to say how loved this guy is by Stoke City fans, obviously playing that many years for the, uh, for the team, but Oh, we're showing some videos and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> one is the testimonial game that they held for you, and uh, Andy donated all the the money from the testimonial game to charities, um, which is incredible. And uh, and uh, but you see, you scored the goal. So this we had a little chuckle about this before. <laughs> 
Uh, we got on air. So uh, entire career, you scored one goal. It was against Clyde, and that was in Scotland. So they had a chant, Stoke City fans. And what was the chant? If Wilco scores, we're on the pitch. Right. And then <laughs> at the and then at the testimonial game, uh, we had some great names come out for that as well for the testimonial game. Yeah. Uh, penalty shot, and you scored. And they rushed the pitch. Why am I describing everything and not letting you <laughs> describe it? But what was that like? I guess is my question. How great was that? No, it was, uh, it was an amazing feeling because uh, I'd come come close a few times against some good teams in the Premier League, uh, and the closer I got, that's when the the song developed. Uh, unfortunately, the manager would leave me back on set pieces to defend, so never really got too many chances. Yeah. And when I did, they they developed this song, and uh, it was. I couldn't have asked for a better way to get a, a send off into retirement, even though it was cut early. And another thing that we were kind of laughing about is, and we're showing the video about this as well, is um, you'd never had a chance to go see a Stoke City away game. So after you retired, you went and saw one at Man City. <laughs> and the video of <laughs> the fans approaching uh, you in the concourse, and you guys had a fantastic time. You're singing and dancing and everything. and. Uh, but just a man of the people, and you said, and as you said, this is not every day that you get a Premier League player that's going to mingle with the fans yeah. like this. I mean, obviously, this is a guy who is so loved by the fans. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, especially me, a, a, a lifetime fan of the club, you know, and seeing Andy play and seeing him on many levels, it's great. And you know, I've never met a, a player like that, so you know, he deserves everything that, he, that he's had from me. Right. So we're running out of time, but. How, I know it was a couple of years early, the retirement a earlier than you planned, but how are you enjoying retirement so far? It was tough, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's tough to deal with uh, to start, um, but making the, the transition uh, from player to coach is, is good and this experience with ADP has, has been great for me to uh, develop my own coaching skills. I mean, I've done work with Stokes Academy, but um, just to find myself as a coach and, and uh, give my experience that I've had playing against the best players in the world and and uh, give that back to some kids and hopefully develop them and create some, some good players. Well, it's that you've come to help out with this and uh, I'm not going to get it wrong this time. It's adpsoccer.com if people want to find out more. And again, the camps are running until the 26th. Yeah. Um, and this is the not just the defensive camp now, but like a general camp yeah. uh, for all the kids. So it's once in a lifetime opportunities if people want to sign up for this to grow your game. Um, thank you for being here. No worries. Yes, no, thank, thank you, you so me. much. And good luck for the rest of the summer. We're going to have a camera out there to follow you guys and get some stuff. So, guys, thanks for being here. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. More CAF TV coming up in just a second. Welcome back to CAF TV. On to the men's open group we had now. And don't look now, but Toronto Atomic is going on a run. After starting the season with five straight defeats, Atomic got its act together, won two straights, and continued its smoking hot play against Brampton on Saturday. Atomic's been like a completely different team over the last three weeks, and they were just too much for City to handle. They draw first blood. Roman Sakno, nice feet to Bodan Polichkov. And Atomic goes up one zip. Unfortunately for Brampton, keeper Avatar Kodzo slipped on the wet turf uh, moments later and twisted his ankle pretty good. Uh, he was in obvious discomfort down on the pitch for some time and got helped off. So Gary Kent puts on the gloves and the jersey, says, heck, I'll give it a try. Takes his place in goal. All things considered, didn't do too bad. A little shaky at times, but he's not a goalie, so we'll... Give him a pass as he bobbles the shot, but then smothers it there. Uh, nice movement, uh, ball movement by Atomic here. Dario Brezak and Miran Fatah playing give and go. Brezak blasting it just wide of the far post, though. And then it's Kent coming up big to rob the Toronto sniper. Not bad at all, Mr. Kent. Uh, a bit shaky on this one, though. Polichkov slides it past them here to make it 2-zip for Toronto. Uh, Atomic. In the second half, Brampton gets its offense going finally. Jonathan Singh out front uh, with the one-timer here. Nice stop by the Atomic Keeper, though. Toronto would add one more. Fabio Penaranda with a nice feed uh, he takes, and then he slams it by Kent to make it three goals for Atomic. And that was more than enough on this day. 3-0 TO is your final. That's now three in a row for Atomic after losing the first five to start the season, so they've really upped their game 
as of late. Okay, one more open group game. Supernova versus BSC. This one was ugly. Nova scoring early and often. Second minute, nice feed out front here. But BSC's defense just completely AWOL. In it goes, one zip Nova. They were just getting started. Two minutes later, they don't even challenge the Nova forward here. He just takes his time and then picks the top corner. Way too easy. Two zip. It was like target practice. Too much time and space all around. 12th minute. Uh, in it goes. And uh, it's uh, three zip at that point. Then 21st minute. BSC just continues to sit back. These are beautiful shots by Nova, but when you've got six guys sitting back in the box, it's like target practice, and that made it five zip at that point. Second half, uh, the onslaught continues. Apologies, Supernova needs new jerseys. The numbers are impossible to read. Supernova player, whoever you are, smashes the ball in from 18 yards, and that made it seven nil at that point. Uh, it had long passed the point of being embarrassing when John Lozano, and I think it's John Lozano anyway. Uh, calls for it, gets it, waltzes in and beats the keeper. 8 nothing, and then Zach Elliott with a nice feed to somebody out front whose number I still can't read. Nova with another goal, and then they would add one more to make it 10 zip. But does it really matter at that point? Ouch. By far the biggest blowout this year in the Supergroup, BSC just overwhelmed on this day as first place Supernova puts up a 10 spot okay let's take a look then at the league table uh, starting with the under 14s uh, epic tied with adp on top followed by london and then brie brampton elite tied with chantilly and toronto international in a three-way tie there for fifth uh, to the under 16 group we go united on top of epic now as epic suffered their first loss of the year followed by chantilly dfc pace future ADP Blue and Brampton Elite uh, currently in eighth with three points. And to the open group, then Supernova now on top, although they have played one more game than Toronto, Croatia, followed by Epic, Brampton City, Toronto Atomic, and BSC smarting after receiving that 10 nothing spanking at the hands of Atomic this weekend. Okay, the top five plays of the week in the calf countdown. Uh, number five, Mystery Man for Supernova, whose jersey we cannot read. Top of the box, gorgeous shot, part of a 10-0 Nova blowout win. Number four, Epic's Cuba Grant against Chantilly. Two saves, love the second one. Get out of here! As he just smacks it away. Number three, Carson Provenzano of Chantilly. Doing a little robbing of his own as he skies to make the beautiful save right there. Uh, number two, Futures Isaiah Bodemid with the sweet little move against ADP coming up right here. Watch it, whoops! And then he slams it home. Very nice goal, Isaiah. Number one, it was the week of the goalie, I think. Alessandro Pocaccini, point blank save against Pace FC right there. Sweet stop. And you got it, Alessandro, our calf play of the week. And that's it for this week. Just remember, though, to keep up on all things with the league. CalfSoccer.com is the website, at calf underscore football on Twitter, and of course, Canadian Academy of Football on Facebook. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next week.